Hello, all of you beautiful people. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous if my dogs won't bark. <laughs> yeah, this video. Okay, so now I've got one choking. This video, um, I don't even know. I'm not exactly sure how to start this video. I think this is going to have to be a new series because... I've been telling you guys um, that I wanted to do a series on um, hormones for a while now and I haven't gotten around to it and with a move and everything, you know what the story is. So on my beauty group, okay, um, and my fitness group, for those of you who are still not, you know, in there and, and, and knowing what's going on and whatnot, um, a lot of discussion has happened lately about hormones, okay. Now, um, this is obviously, there's no, there are so many aspects of just hormones that uh, there is psychological stuff there's physiological stuff physical stuff there is you know all kinds of things related to hormones that affects different people in different areas of their life okay um we have different age groups of people asking different questions a lot of the girls that's on my group um is my age and older in their 40s and up um, and of course, um, they're asking, you know, about male hormones and female hormones and all of those things. Okay, so here's the thing. First, above everything, okay, I do not endorse by any means hormone replacement therapy. I don't think it should be done. I think you should never go to a doctor and you should never get fake hormones in your body. Okay, and I'm telling you now that doctors are morons. Okay, any doctor that puts a uh, a female that's uh, in menopause on a birth control pill is telling her, okay, honey, I'm going to give you cancer so that I can make more money out of you when you go for the cancer treatments. I want to fuck up your body completely so that we can get you in the hospital and charge you millions of dollars, okay? That's my opinion of doctors and hormone replacement therapy, okay? Because that's the first thing I did. Like, I know... I'm going to have to go um, basically start with how the whole hormone, why, what happened that we started studying everything about hormones and trying to figure out what's going on, okay? First of all, <clears throat> I went into full-blown menopause at age 38, okay? So my periods went away when I, when I started early menopause, uh, premenopausal signs at age 32, actually. Okay, and the doctor told me that I was premenopausal. He said it could go on for years, you know, it could go on, blah, blah, blah. And he wanted to put me back on the pill. Well, in my younger days, okay, I never did well on the pill. I mean, I was on the pill for, for on the birth control per, pill for a long period of time, but I was on like six or 700 different types, okay? None of them worked for me and made me feel better or good in any way whatsoever, okay? So the moment I could quit it, like after Reinhardt was born, uh, or not after, before, like, um, when I, when I want, wanted to get pregnant for Reinhardt was the last time in my life I ever took the birth control pill. After Reinhardt was born, I never went back on it, okay? I never had good side effects. I had all the worst side effects of all the pills, okay? I was bloated. I gained weight. I um, had um, actually um, uh, emotional, I was an emotional roller coaster up and down. I had, was sad all the time, you know, depending on where I was on that stupid pill at some point in time. I was just miserable. It, nothing, I mean, I even had fake uh, pregnancy symptoms, okay? It, it was retarded. One pill gave me morning sickness. It, it was just crazy, okay? So none of those pills worked for me. So then eventually I went off of those pills. So I basically, Reinhardt was born when I was 29, okay? So since 28, I've never been on a pill. Since age 32, I had premenopausal symptoms. It kept going and going and going. And then age 37, I went into what I thought was full-blown menopause because my period went away for like six or seven months or something like that. Then it came back for two months and then it went away. And I think my, my last, last period that I ever had, I was 38 years old and I had um, my last period the last week of May. So my birthday is the 1st of May, my 38th birthday, the 1st of May. The last week in um, May of that month, I had my last period ever in my life, okay? So I'm now 42 years old, so I've been in full-blown menopause for four years, okay? So not only that, um, that's my part of my hormonal story. Johan uh, had hormonal imbalances that started with him um, when he was... Ooh, I'm going to have to get some, some information from I can't remember what happened exactly when with him with his hormones and whatever, okay? 
but in Canada, I can tell you now, okay, I can't say in Canada, but I will say in Ontario and in Ottawa, people, you are not going to get any help, hormonal help, anywhere. There's one clinic in the whole of Ontario, they're in um, Toronto, um, Johan went to the people there um, to help him with his hormones, and that guy is a quack, okay, complete quack, knows nothing, the biggest moron you've ever seen in your life, okay, if you go to that guy, if you're a woman that is um, menopausal, he's going to put you on the pill, that's what a freaking moron is, just like any other damn doctor, okay, he screwed your hands and hormones up even more, okay, he's a useless quack, don't even go to him, okay, so um, in the rest of Canada, I don't know, because we haven't lived elsewhere, I just know in the whole of Ontario, there's one guy that's supposed to specialize in hormones, and I know he's a quack, because we've dealt with him, and he, all he did was he just screwed Johan up completely, okay? So then we moved to the States. Now in the States, you know, there's more availability to more doctors. That's, I mean, there's the morons here too, to believe you me. But, you know, uh, in San Diego, L.A., you know, those, oh, that's where all the good guys go, you know, the guys with the brains and, and the stuff like that. So we ended up going and seeing a, um, a hormone guy, and, and I'll just advertise him right on this friggin' page. I have no problem doing that. His name is Dr. Bronner. We also have another guy. His uh, name is Dr. Philbeck. Now, those two guys, okay, are going to fix you right up with, 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 with hormones. If anybody in the States, and I, I know for people to go for, to fly from Canada to San Diego to go and see this doctor, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. But if you ever do go to, you know, decide to come to the States for a holiday, go to freaking San Diego and go see this guy. Okay. Now, for people who's, who are in Canada, we're going to try and help you, but we're not going to be able to get you the same help as the people in the States or people in other countries, because I have no idea, you know, if I tell you to go to see a wellness doctor or hormone doctor in Russia or Asia or, you know, whatever, he might, the guy in Asia might give you some rhino horn and say, okay, you're going to be fine, and, you know, a guy in Russia might give you some whiskey with a, or a kilo with a worm in it and say, okay, your hormones are good, okay? So I have no idea in other countries, but I have experience in the States and I have experience in um, Canada, okay? Canada is useless. It, there is, it, it's absolutely horrendous. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you two doctors in San Diego that we've seen, I'm, we're still seeing them, okay? We're living in Atlanta, freaking people here, mm -hmm. Bye bye. Uh, okay, so we have not seen a doctor here regarding hormones. I am sticking to my doctor in San Diego. Um, he gets uh, our blood test, blood work done, which in Atlanta they couldn't even get the blood work right. So can you imagine if they've got to deal with your freaking hormones? Okay, so um, we ended up getting our blood work done. They effed up the, the blood work, or whatever, so we had to redo it, it, it get it uh, sent off to Dr. Um, Bronner in San Diego, and so he's still, you know, doing your one and my hormones. And I mean, I've been in, if, if, listen, guys, okay, the hormones that I'm on is not synthetic hormones, it's bioidentical hormones, okay? Um, so breaking up the hormones, I, I don't even know how to start this series because my, my mind is filled up with all this stuff that needs to come out, that I need to puke out, and I can't puke it out, in, and it needs to be broken down, and I'm in a flat fuck. So, um, for a start, why don't you guys go and Google bioidentical, um, uh, bio, what the hell is it called? Bioidentical hormones, okay? Uh, first, and just read up on that, because I know there's a lot of people that is afraid of taking hormones, but you do not have to be afraid of taking hormones. You just have to be afraid of the shit that you're, family physician wants to put you on, okay, don't go anywhere near that stuff, do not let a family physician deal with your hormones, okay, because you will be so screwed up, it's not even funny, if you are lucky enough to get a person that knows anything about hormones, now, so now how are we going to divide this, are we going to divide this into two and do a bunch of videos for males and then a bunch of videos for females, I have no idea how to, to, to start tackling this thing, here's the thing, Regarding hormones, okay, hormones is one of the those things that not a lot of people know a lot about hormones, but it regulates everything in your body. It regulates your fat, it regulates your fat loss, it re well, not if you eat crap, I'm talking about people, you know, I mean, I can give you the perfect hormones and the perfect program and the perfect diet, but if you just eat a bunch of shit, you're going to be fat no matter how wonderful your hormones are. So that's, <laughs> you kind of have to lose your, use your logic here, okay? So, um, but it regulates, and then the biggest thing, the biggest, biggest thing, okay, 
that re hormones regulate your libido. Okay, so one of the things that we've been talking about in the female group only, okay, are libido. So um, there's a lot of girls, I mean, there's a lot of couples that are married that, that, that have issues, <laughs> you know, with libido. Because we have a couple of people that where the female has a higher libido than the male, and a couple of instances where the male has more of a libido than the female, you know. But there's, it's not just a thing of hormones. This, the, the, the facet that surrounds the whole libido issue and uh, things like that, it goes much deeper than just the hormones. The intricacies of um, actual libido and sex and all of those things, obviously I'm not going to be able to put those videos on YouTube, okay? So I'm going to make a couple of videos that's going to be R-rated um, that I'm not going to be able to post on, on um, YouTube. I'm only going to be posting it to people who uh, have requested it and that I know is married in my age group and it's like over 18, okay? I'm not even going to post it for 18-year-old girls because I'm not going to give sexual advice to 18-year-old people, okay? So, unless you are uh, uh, subscribed to me, okay, plus a part of my group, you will not be receiving this video. You will not be getting an invitation to this video, okay? Because um, it's looking for trouble. Like, it's something you do not discuss on YouTube because it's going to, you can imagine what, what a war that's going to cause, okay? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so now um, let's stick with hormones first, okay? So the three hormones that is the most important um, for, let's talk, let's talk to people about, say, 40 and up, okay? So when you get into your premenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal time, and then also for males, when you get into um, an uh, uh, older, you know, age, I would say, for, like, higher 40s and up, okay? So... There's, now, there's another thing. Now I'm going higher 40s and up, and I'm thinking about all these questions in my mind, okay? So, um, there's a lot of things that's been discussed in the group, okay? Um, porn was mentioned in the same, the same thing. Porn was mentioned in there, and I don't have anything against porn, okay? <laughs> so, I'm not, I'm not saying nobody's allowed or somebody should or whatever. I'm just discussing porn in itself. Um, um, but it, it is an industry that... I studied a little bit uh, about a year ago, okay, and found out a lot of really weird things, okay, because now added to the hormones and everything else, now there's a link that's, you know, for the brain that goes into addictions, okay, can be sugar addiction, can be porn addiction, could be drug addiction, could be alcohol addiction. So there's this, like, literally, I have to get this little paper, and then I have a person in the middle, and then I have hormones here, addictions here, uh, libido here, um, and psychological issues here, okay? And all of this forms one big, huge, honk and circle. So how do you um, combine all of those things, okay? Because if your hormones, so, so there's links between all of these things, okay? So... Um, if your hormones are screwed up, but you have a happy marriage, okay, and you have no extra issues in your marriage, and you're not, you know, angry at each other, uh, built up anger from like way years back, blah, 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 then your problem is easily solved, okay.